Hello everyone, Rare Modder Reviews here, and today we have the Rogue Gray Strike Freedom Gundam Deactive Mode. So, this is a P Bandai exclusive, cost uh, around $30, so like, mostly take, can't even say give. <laughs> and um, this one was a review that I jumped ahead of the pile as a request uh, from one of my viewers here. So, uh, I want to actually apologize to the viewer as it's been kind of a bit of a, a while since they requested it. Uh, I'm not going to make any excuses, but we are here now. And that is all that counts. So, um, first and foremost, what I'm going to say is that um, this thing is literally the exact same thing as the Real Grey Strike Freedom Gundam that already exists. Except, again, as I said, since it's called the Deactive Mode, it's basically just like a recolor of uh, said Gundam. So it's uh, basically made to mimic how the Strike Freedom Gundam appeared in the show when it wasn't active. <laughs> so it doesn't have the phase shift armor on, it's that kind of a muted color scheme. So this is honestly my excuse to kind of grab this thing in real great form as anyone who's watched this channel enough will know that I'm more so into Master Grades. So the majority of the kits of my collection are Master Grades. I occasionally would deviate from them here and there, uh, depending on if it's a, a suit that isn't in the um, masquerade form. And again, uh, I really love the real great line, so I try to find an excuse wherever I can to pick one up. And this thing's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, I believe their Strike Freedom was one of the earlier kits in the real great line. and. As a result, this thing does have some issues. One thing I can point out right now, as you see in the leg there, it is in with um, a joint that doesn't have those rivets, a lot of like the master grades would have. So it's in kind of basically by friction. As a result, the leg pops out a bit. Um, that little piece there, to uh, latch the beam saver to the side armor, that's not in very good. It's another, again, like friction-based part, which I complain about a lot in uh, some of my reviews. Uh, parts that are in basically purely by friction. They tend to not stay on it very well. And um, going back to what I was saying about this thing being a, a earlier real great, it used the uh, MS uh, joint system, I think it's called, which allowed a real great to use, or should I say the real great line created, where it has like that pre-built inner frame kind of connect and build pieces over. And um, the reason why they kind of bogged down on a lot of those is because they are very loose and um, tend to wear out over time. I built this thing maybe about a month ago, maybe um, a few weeks or so, but regardless, this thing has already, like the, the legs have already loosened to the point that this thing cannot stand up. I attribute that to the backpack, how big and heavy this backpack is. I imagine if you take it off, it probably wouldn't have so much trouble standing up, but um, I'm probably honestly gonna end up putting this thing on an action base early just because this thing has trouble standing up. It could sort of prop itself up with the wings, I guess. So maybe I could kind of bear with that. It's going to look a little awkward, but I just, again, wanted to tell you guys about the standing issues. Also, want to report that, again, this is a real great, so everything you see here, straight out of the box, nothing colored, nothing painted, not, not even anything lined. Uh, you find real great, you rarely need to line anything. I mean, there are a few things I could probably line, but I'm not even sure if I want to, because, again, it looks great to me. I did put a few stickers on just for the eyes there, if you guys could make that out. Uh, the stickers for the forehead. There's actually supposed to be a second one on top of this, but I made a mistake of putting a sticker on first before the parts, and it kind of got uh, yeeted into oblivion, so the thing's permanently not going to have a top uh, camera sticker there. And there's supposed to be one for the back. Uh, again, I'm not sure what happened to that one. I probably put that on too soon, and it got yeeted to oblivion as well, so that sucks, but it's not a big deal. It's supposed to be deactive anyway, so... Ideally, you probably wouldn't even want it to have any of the cameras on. Well, I think they might have been colored when it was deactivated, whether it was online or not, but moving on. One cool thing that I did not expect is this thing actually has some silver details around it. You'll be able to see it better when I take the funnels, um, I'm sorry, Dragoons off later on um, inside the wings, but I'm sure you can see a bit of the silver peeking out here and there around the kit. So I feel like this intro is going on way long enough, so we're going to go ahead and jump straight into articulation so the head move up and down side to side rotate all that um, it's on a ball joint I also want to mention that the uh, forehead hair you see where my thumbs pointing that little piece there 
it is um very loose again it's another friction based part so be careful with that i accidentally lost it but thankfully i was able to find it um because yeah, that'd be a pain to uh, lose how small that is the arms they would be able to move 360 but the wing is kind of getting away uh the shoulder there has a little joint that makes it move upward so that's great for our uh, arm articulation although honestly this is kind of how far it goes it does wobble a little bit kind of move around uh <laughs> you got to be careful with some of this stuff though because again oh uh, how small and fragile this kit is you're going to break something so again you just want to be careful I move that around a little too much that kind of came off the arm rotation here i'd say it's flawless so you got a perfect bend out of that uh oops there's a little piece in the back of the um arm there's not on very well that fell out uh i'm not gonna bother grabbing that though it's not important anyway you have the movement for the arm here so it can move inwards like that for kind of a kung fu pose I do not believe it can move the other way. Ah, no, no, it can't. So, they have no problems doing any sort of push-ups, or in this case, it looks like it's doing like a, a DBZ uh, kind of pose there, but uh, there's also a little movement there under the shoulder there, as you've seen, so that can go 360. And here's on a ball joint, so that too can go 360. The fingers are the uh, typical road grade style fingers, at least the earlier ones where the thumb is movable all on its own, so that can go 360 and all that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the thumb should be able to move a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys can make that out. So there's a little bit of movement there with the thumb. Same for the fingers. Uh, these three fingers are molded together and pecked on by a ball joint, so you can't spin them around, how weird that looks. Uh, the trigger finger is individually movable and that too has a little bit of movement with it as well. So you technically can use these fingers to hold some of the accessories and whatnot. Uh, these are kind of like the basic real great hairs that they kind of share across all the lines. Just change the back piece there to make it look more like the uh, hands that the gun is supposed to have. But there are a bunch of different individual hands for holding accessories and whatnot. So I'll show those off later. Uh, let me see. Going on to the waist articulation. Oh, there goes that beam again. I have to pick that up. <laughs> uh, well, while this accidentally happens, the cockpit actually has an opening gimmick there. So it's not technically the articulation, but I will show it off. So as you can see, you can move forward. And then you can see there's the little opening for the cockpit there. The freedom, well, both freedoms actually always have that strange gimmick because the um, whole nuclear power system in the chest, this one just has a straight up can in his chest that's why it does it so the um side armor can move i'm not going to show that right now because that's part of a gimmick why it could even move but um as you can see it does move upwards so that's not too much of a gimmick the front armor here can move about up here probably can move more but i'm afraid to break something back armor can move out about there and as you can see the legs can kick up about that much as well uh the legs as you can see there, when you move them, that side panel there moves with it. So that's a nice little detail. So pretty good movement on the legs. The feet, as you can see there, they kind of split a little bit at the toe and the back. And they also move up like so, which more so said that transformable suits can do, but there are plenty of suits that still move like that anyway. So not much ankle movement, which sucks because this thing as a result isn't too planted. So one thing I tried to do was, um, I also want to mention that knee movement there. I want to show that off a little better. Yeah, I tried to kind of plant this thing by making it kind of a bit of a wider stance, but that did not work whatsoever. So I just wanted to note that. Uh, the wings of the backpack, they can move out about here and then they start to clip. They can move out just a little bit, so that'll kind of help move them away. But... I, I'd recommend being very careful with these wings as you move these a little too much or are a little too uh, rough with it. You do risk the um, wings potentially snapping off or something. So again, just be careful with those wings. So let me go ahead and pick up the beam sabers. And geez, since we're basically at the part we're doing accessories anyway. So this thing has two beam sabers. 
I'm gonna go ahead and unpeg those there. And I'm gonna put these back on there. So they make a bit of a click, so you'd think they'd be in there well, but no. <laughs> so this thing, of course, has two pink beams. And I forget whether the beams on a show were this red or if they were um, like a light pink or whatever. But I'm gonna show off in a second there, but um, I guess while I have these hands in, we'll see how well I can hold the beams in with these hands. So they do have pegs in the uh, hands, by the way. So it, could, it can't really hold the beat sabers in this hand too well. I mean, it can, but it's like at that awkward-ish angle. It's not really in too well. But thankfully, this kit does have plenty of different hands. I also forgot to mention, I actually have a, a fist, a closed fist um, in the uh, left hand there. So of course, I just want to show off. Comes with two sets of those. This is the other real great style hand. So again, two sets of those. And it also has these two open hands. But the way they're, they're um, positioned, I'm pretty sure these are supposed to emulate the part in the show where um, the Strike Freedom, I forgot where they grabbed um, a beam or grabbed Shin Shield. They grabbed something, I remember. Sort of kind of like in a pose like this. So I think that's more so what these hands are supposed to be for. But the hands we actually need here are going to be these hands here, which are for holding the accessories. So that of course includes both the beam sabers here and the, um, whatchamacallit, the, the rifles, which I'll show off later. So that's one cool thing to peg here, as you can see. It doubles as a way to hold the um, sabers in the side armor, as well as the peg in the hand. So I love when they do that kind of one size fits all. And as you can see, they hold it flawlessly. And one amazing thing about the Strike Freedom is, as you can see, it has these little rivets, both sides of the beam sabers. So you could peg that in here, like so. And now he has the double-sided beam saber, which is more so something I think of uh, with the uh, Infinite Justice or just the Justice. I feel like the Justice used the um, double-sided beam sabers more. But regardless, that's what you can do with it. And of course, these are the same hands. Both sabers would be able to hold in either hand just fine. Bear with me if this thing keeps drooping off camera. Like I said, I obviously probably should just put this thing on a stand. This is gonna keep kind of falling over. In fact, I might do that now because I gotta show off this thing on a stand anyway. So uh, I'm gonna put this beam saber back in, then I'll do just that. Nah, actually, while I do that, hold on, just wanna show off. As you can see here, one of the gimmicks is the rail cannon. So that is something you can do with this kit. You could go ahead and push those uh, parts out as well, extend the barrels. So now he has his uh, rail cannons. So, of course, this is gonna be the part for the uh, adapter. If you've collected some rail grades, you recognize that. Now, one thing, um, I need you guys to actually help me out on, oh geez, there goes a leg, is, um, the structures were completely in Japanese, so I didn't know what the heck it was trying to say, but it was trying to tell me what kind of stand I'm supposed to use for this adapter. I'm about to bring out my Action Base 5 for it, but um, I can already say from playing with this thing off camera, this thing does not seem like it's supposed to be compatible with it. It's a little stiff, so I'm a little worried about even putting this thing on one. Because this thing really got in there, and I didn't like how tight that felt in there, but regardless, there we go. So I'm going to throw him on this. Um, I honestly might have needed to get the um, I might have needed to get the other piece for this thing, because I don't even know if it'll be able to support its weight with these wings. There we go. So I think if I put put it on backwards, it might hold it up. So hopefully this uh work while I uh, finish reviewing this thing. All right, so moving on. 
This thing comes with two beam rifles. They are different, as you can see from the back. This part has like a little hollowed out uh, stock there. Now, this thing doesn't have a peg, but it holds in just fine from what I've seen. So we're gonna go ahead, throw the beam rifles in there. If I can stop struggling. There we go. So it holds the beam rifles in just fine. Go ahead and throw it in there. And I guess I'll throw it in the other hand as well. Why not? Oop. All right, let's try that again. There we go. So voila, you now have this guy, both beam, sip, um, I'm sorry, beam rifles in hand, rail guns out, doing a signature uh, full burst pose. I guess you really make it special. They tell you to hold the wings when you move this thing. So voila, now you have him, wings out, guns out. But of course, one of the signature things the uh, Strike Freedom could pull off was the combination of the rifles. So the way that's handled is you slide that piece out to the side, revealing that there's a little blue scope. You then would put this rifle in side there. You slide this piece out like so, extend the barrel there, and voila. So now you have, um, oh, actually you're supposed to, maybe actually, I think you're supposed to, I think you're actually supposed to uh, slide this one down. So you're actually supposed to kind of put it in this hand. It's actually wrong for taking this hand, um, the rifle out this way. Let me show that off on camera so you guys aren't just looking at my arm. So one thing I wanted to know, I don't know what I did wrong, but um, the back piece of um, this rifle here slides off. So I might have to take this thing apart and see what the heck happened that now that piece is sliding off. Actually, I kind of think I might see why this piece doesn't look like it's quite on right. I don't know what happened there. Sort of looked just fine when I was building it, but there you go. So now you have that super long barrel there, or rifle. I guess maybe I might be able to put in an open hand and kind of have them, let me see, hold it like this or something. I could probably do that. But um, regardless, we still have one more accessory, actually two more. This does have a little unpainted uh, pile of figure of Kira there. So there's that, but um, there's a shield here. So the way the shield works is you take off the little gray piece and the arm there, and then you mount it into the shield like so. Then you just kind of stuff that into the arm and voila. So one weird thing they did for this shield is they actually have like a clear piece of plastic here for it, and then they have um like four stickers you put underneath it to give it a blue effect. Personally, I think they should have just modeled it in a blue color because this really doesn't even do anything for me. It doesn't look any better than it would have if they just painted it normally, I'd say. And honestly, it's kind of a bit of a pain lining those stickers up. I didn't do it perfectly, but it looks good enough in my opinion. So that's basically it for the accessories. Uh, one more thing you can do with this uh, kit though. And that shit usually holds in just fine. I think it's really the fact that um, the rifles are kind of poking at it. Put that back on. You, of course, could put this on the other arm as well. But the other part does come off. And technically, this, they should have honestly just given you two shields. Although I would have loved that they gave you one big shield for like uh, the pose he did to show where he combined them. But that's just me being a little nitpicky. But um, moving on. So... We're actually going to collapse the shields here. Was that the f something fell off? What the heck was that? 
Oh, this is all the piece of the arm, of course. All right, but anyway, so you could collapse the um, rail guns there. Oh, oh, of course, that fell off. At least it didn't fall on the ground that time. Okay, I got to position the beam. Uh, the rail guns like so. The beam saver's in it. Uh, I'm actually move the beams there. So then the back armor here, slide that down like so. I believe you're supposed to slide these out. And you slide this over, slide these out. And now the rail guns become the back armor there. And if you guys notice, now there are some little arms there on the side. They can't move a little bit, but you really don't need to do so. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the rifles back out, put them back into the proper positions. As you can see here on the side of the rifles, they have two little uh, clips, I guess you call that. And you just put those right there and those little hooks. And now you have one of my most favorite things about the Strike Freedom, the fact that his weapons literally comprise his uh, front and rear armor. So I just love that arm to the tooth style that the Strike Freedom has. It's just like pure overkill. I just absolutely love it. So actually, I'm going to put a hand back on I had this thing out of hand. So, here we go. That can honestly just stay off at this point. So I'm gonna put that back on in here. So that is just about all the accessories. There's one more thing I wanted to show off, and that of course would be uh, the I want to say this fell off. That can stay off. The fact that you can of course remove the dragoons. So you just go ahead and unpack those like so. And as you can see, there's a lot more of that uh, silver that's shining through. So unfortunately, there's no way for you to pose the Dragoons um, when you do remove them. Although I imagine if you have uh, the right action base, you might just be able to pull something off with it. I'm not sure if you guys could make that out there. That'd be like the inside of this thing's barrel or whatever. Because of course, these are uh, weapons, so they shoot beams out of those. Of course, you can also slightly unpack them if you can make that up there on that side to kind of give it the look of them about to deploy so that's another thing you can do with the uh dragons as well if you didn't want to just have them all out have them look like they're getting ready to come off so anywho um that's honestly just about it for the strike freedom and all its accessories I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a quick size comparison with um, the only other. Well, actually, that's no, not true. Oh, darn, I wasn't thinking. I actually should have brought the Phoenix out. It's all right. I'll bring that out. Oh, sorry. I'll do a size comparison with that thing when I eventually review it. But anywho, if I can even get this thing to stand up, honestly, geez, it might even be worse with me having the guns onto this at the side. Ah, oh, jeez. You know what I might try to do? I might try to take the backpack off, actually. Let me see if maybe if I take the backpack off, you can stand up. You can't even do that. I'm pretty sure you can. Let me see. There we go. Let me see if it stands up a little better with the backpack off. So we're going to do that real quick. Get the leg on first. All right. So if you're curious how the backpack looks, kind of, Size it up yourself and see if maybe you could put something else's backpack in there. So let's see if he, he stands up a little better. Lo and behold, yeah. He kind of does. I can get the feet planted. So yeah, it's more so that um backpack that makes him a little heavy in the rear there. I'll grab that later. That freaking stupid uh beam saber pull uh, holder part or whatever. So he, holds, he stands up a little better without the backpack, but not much as you can see. 
Whereas his, uh, his buddy here, the God Gundam, stands up just fine. So, these are both real greats. I didn't think it's worth putting anything else out next to it, but one thing I want to mention about the real grid line is uh, because it's 1 to 144 scale, it's a little tough when to make smaller suits like the God Gundam, it's accurate size. So the God Gundam is actually supposed to be way smaller than the Freedom. The Freedom is like, I think around 18, 19 meters, whereas the God Gundam is supposed to be like 14, 15, maybe 16 meters. And as you can see, the God Gundam is only slightly smaller. And that's because uh, it's not um, accurately put into a 1 to 144 scale. It's probably more of a, I don't know, like, one the uh, my twenty two something like that. It's again you get where I'm getting with it though. It's just not as um, small as it's supposed to be. Cause it is actually one one forty four scale. Probably be freaking like around here head height. <laughs> but um, size comparisons aside, that is gonna pretty much be it for this thing's actual review. Where as the verdict here, I'm going to recommend this thing. But I'd probably say that um, you definitely would need to sort out an uh, action-based situation here. Because again, the real, um, real great, sheesh. The action-based five here will work good enough. But again, I'm not very confident in putting this thing in uh, this little connection here. This does not quite feel right. I want to say this thing uses the same connection as the Phoenix. So I have to look at the Phoenix again and see if... Um, it tells me what base they want you to use for that connection piece there. Because again, I don't think that action base file is supposed to be used for it. Maybe there's an adapter piece there you want you to use that I, I couldn't fish out. But uh, again, I, I'd still recommend this thing. It's just, again, you need to find out an action base to deal with the standing issues it has. And otherwise, uh, I mean, I don't really have too much issues posing it. Some parts do fall off, but that's not too big a deal. You can always tighten it up. And with the legs, honestly, if you just mind the fact that they're kind of a little loose and flimsy, you can solve most of that by just holding in the legs while you get into a pull. So I can't really knock it too much for that. It's not too big of a deal. I've seen way worse issues with kits than uh, the legs coming off. It's actually sort of a common issue. I have quite a few kits that the legs kind of like to fall off if you aren't careful with them. But um, again, this has been Rare Mod Reviews. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next review.